kind of blanked it all out when, when I was doing this, so I kind of like never addressed it at the time. If I feel like I've stuffed too much in the daytime, it's always really tempting just to stick your fingers down your throat. For most of us, eating a simple meal is no big deal, but for Richard, it was. I just used to like gorge myself with food and then just like kind of sneak upstairs and throw it all back up and stuff like that. Regurgitation of all the acids and everything like that ruins your teeth and everything. And you now when you bring it up, your insides get messed up as well. For Grant, just like Richard, a meal would be quickly followed by a trip here to the bathroom. I used to binge eat to make myself feel full and then throw up. Typical bulimia. Both Richard and Grant expose a popular misconception that only women get eating disorders. Richard and Grant suffered from an eating disorder in their teens called bulimia, which involves binge eating or secretive eating and then forcing themselves to be physically sick. <laughs> Good afternoon, National Eating Disorders Association. How can I help you? In fact, according to the National Eating Disorders Association, which advises those with a problem, one in ten of the 60,000 people in the UK with the illness is male. But according to Ratika Bhutani of the EDA, the figure is even higher among younger people. It is supposed to be as high as 25% now in school-aged boys. So why are so few men coming forward with the disorder? Rutika Bhutani said it's because many see it as a sign of being weak. Maybe there's a fear of gaining, um, losing respect amongst their friends or of, of a fear of being deemed as being weak. And uh, because it was eating disorder was supposed to be a illness which is related to women being considering to be, who wanted to be slim initially. Claire Harley, the senior dietitian at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, is finding the same thing. Specifically, diet and body consciousness is supposed to be a female thing. And I think a lot of them don't want to admit that, they've, that they're concerned about something that is generally, usually seen in females. Richard kept his bulimia to himself, as he didn't think it was something men suffered from, let alone talk about. I think it's something that ballerinas do and, I don't know, puffed and stuff like that. But Richard does admit he wishes he'd sought help sooner. I mean, it would be nice to talk to someone about it and uh, maybe talk to other people that were going through the same thing so I didn't feel so I know, isolated. Those men with the most serious eating disorders are often referred to eating disorder units such as this one at the Bethlehem Royal Hospital in Beckenham. But as senior clinical charge nurse Vita Srinarun says, they see very few men as most are diagnosed with other symptoms. At the point of referral, men tend to get diagnosed with other things rather than eating disorders. So they might get a diagnosis of stress or, or depression or something else that might be um, primary to an eating disorder diagnosis and then they don't get referred to the eating disorder services. Eating disorder units such as this one only see up to two patients a year who are male as fewer men are diagnosed with an eating illness than women and even fewer get to this stage. But one man who did was Grant who spent six months in a Glasgow hospital nine years ago aged 16 when he was five stone underweight. He says he was watched 24 hours a day. They just monitored you constantly to make sure that you didn't do it and counselled you when you felt the need to. There's no privacy. You don't get privacy. There's a nurse come, or a nurse used to come with you to the bathrooms, and there was a nurse in the ward during the night. Now, Vita Srinaran says this lack of privacy is necessary to ensure a patient's recovery. The standard treatment for this unit is, is primarily the refeeding aspect. We tend to get patients who are um, difficult to treat in the community, um, and by the time they get to us, they would have been really, really unwell they would have had quite low BMIs. So primarily we try and um, refeed them um, to get back to normal, healthy weights. The treatment doesn't end there. Staff also help patients get ready for life after their release from hospital. We offer um, the psychological therapy, so they'll get psychology, they might get cognitive behavioral therapy, they might get cognitive analytical therapy and motivational enhancement therapy. We would help with vocational stuff, so look, helping them to look at careers. But are the reasons for male eating disorders different from those of women? Claire Harley says things are when concerning body image. Women might be more food conscious, where I find men tend to be very much exercise obsessed and gym obsessed, 
and not as much diet obsessed. Men are often more concerned about being muscly and strong and lean, where women just want to be as thin as they possibly can in the eating disorder field. Grant's own image became an obsession. When you look in a mirror and what you see is a complete it's a different person to what everyone else sees. I still don't see what other people see. I still see what I want to see. But you still have the thing in your head that you're not, you're not as attractive as other people see you. Vita Srinaran says eating disorders are also a cover for deeper emotional problems. They suffer the same level of distress, which goes way beyond their image. I think even if it, if it started off with an issue around image, it, it certainly brings up for them the more difficult issues, I think, that is um, being camouflaged by, by it, the, the body image, self-image stuff. For Richard, it could have been his childhood. I didn't have a very good childhood and stuff with my dad and stuff like that, so I, I, it could have been a number of things that triggered it. I don't know anything specific. What. And with Grant, it was bullying from his partner. My ex was always on my case about my weight. You lose control and the only thing that you've got to control anymore is your, your physical being, isn't it? But who else could be to blame for influencing young men with eating disorders? Well, Vita Srinaran cites the media as having a part to play. It doesn't help that the media portrays men and women as um, perfect, you know, slim, skinny, being perfect. Um, if you're struggling with emotional issues that causing causes you to have eating distress. Something Grant agrees with. The media influences your, your appearance yet because you, you have like these magazines like Attitudes where the models are absolutely, maybe not facially stunning because a lot of them aren't, but their bodies are in the condition that I think everyone would like to have their bodies. They have the broad shoulders and they have the six packs and they have the pecs and they have that. But the features editor of men's magazine Attitude, Paul Flynn, says he's only giving readers what they want. Nobody's going to buy a magazine full of ugly people. Whether we're culpable for portraying people in a certain way or not, I'm not quite sure, because it, it's sort of what comes, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, you know? It, it, people only buy magazines that are full of beautiful people. However, the deputy editor of music magazine Smash Hits, Matt Mason, says he's very careful how he treats body image. What am I do without you? We're careful in the magazine not to make an issue of someone's weight or physical appearance, um, just because we realise that our audience in there, you know, that particular age group are at a very impressionable age. Um, so we would, we would never be cruel to someone or mock someone simply uh, because of their physical appearance. In an interesting twist, a survey by the Eating Disorders Association found that 20% of men with eating disorders are gay, which is double the percentage of gay men in the population. Grant, who's gay himself, believes many gay men are obsessed with body perfection. Gay men are obsessed. You've got to look the very best that you can to get what you want from life now. Yeah. Gay men are very, very shallow in, in that respect, a lot of them. If, if it doesn't look right, then they don't want it. Something Paul Flynn from Gay Men's magazine Attitude understands too well. A lot of pressure on gay men to look a certain way. I think the, the, the rise of sort of muscle culture has got a lot to do with it. There's, you know, you, you walk into a club like DTPM or particularly trade before, before it closed down and you know, the, there's this sea of seemingly perfect, adorable, buffed pectorals. But do gay men or any men ever recover from an eating disorder? While Richard and Grant no longer gorge themselves with food and make themselves sick, Richard says that like many addictions, you never fully recover. The other night I kind of like ate far too much in the daytime and I like felt like I didn't do anything but I could have, so it's kind of always there. It's like an alcoholic. It's always there in the background, always lingering and festering. Though Grant and Richard may not have fully escaped their illness, it's good news though, as most men do get a lot better. But the stark advice from Richard is that anyone who suspects they have an eating disorder should seek help fast, as help is out there. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, eating disorder is an eating disorder, and you just should come forward and seek help, you know, because you might not be strong enough to get through it.